Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the three phases that all autoimmune diseases go through. Yes, all of them. It doesn't matter if you're talking about Hashimoto's or celiac disease or the rainbow of autoimmunity in between those two examples. Every autoimmune disease on planet Earth is going to go through these three distinct phases. Now, this could be relevant for an autoimmune disease that you already know that you have. For example, if you've already been told that you have Hashimoto's, you could learn something about yourself through this video. But most importantly, I share this information because it's possible to capture an autoimmune disease early in phase one or two and either slow the progression or halt it in its tracks so that it doesn't progress to the overt clinical disease. And I say that from firsthand experience. I did that with myself. I've done it with my own body. So I know that it is possible for you. And this is also going to be an important conversation to frame a few videos that are coming up on this channel about an autoimmune cause of low stomach acid. And therefore this condition also can cause persistent B12 deficiency and iron deficiency. And it is not an uncommon autoimmune condition for that matter. So in order to help you potentially halt an autoimmune disease in its tracks and also frame the conversation that we're about to have on this channel about autoimmune causes of low stomach acid, let's get into this and let's get into the three phases of autoimmunity. But before we use this chart behind me, I do want to say right out the gate, you'll notice that I'm using the word phases instead of stages. It's very nitpicky and nuancy and it probably doesn't matter, but I'm choosing to use the word phases because I don't want to freak people out unnecessarily and remind them of cancer staging, right? If we hear the words stage one, stage two, stage three, kind of reflexively, we start to think about cancer staging. And while these are analogous to each other, right? We're using numbers to describe the progression and the severity of an illness. I don't want to remind people about cancer more than I need to in this video. So I'm going to be calling this the three phases of autoimmune disease. So with that being said, let's get into this. And I'm going to use an example from my life. In this case, I'm going to talk about it with reference to Hashimoto's and my mom's journey with Hashimoto's. So little teeny backstory. When I was a baby, I was about six months old and my mom was told that she was hypothyroid and she was put on Synthroid. And that's basically all they did for her for a really long time. They managed her TSH, they fiddled with her medication and she was on Synthroid or Levothyroxine for a lot of years. But she still kind of felt like crap and she had a lot of other symptoms and she still had difficulty losing weight and the doctors were spectacularly unhelpful for 26 years until her daughter went through functional medicine training, learned about Hashimoto's and thought, hey, I'm gonna run some antibody tests and see what we can capture. And lo and behold, I was able to conclude, yeah, it's actually Hashimoto's, it's not just run of the mill iodine deficiency or something like that. So that being said, we're gonna kind of use my mom's journey and my mom's story so that we can make sense out of this chart behind me. So phase one. First day, let's say one random Tuesday, if she was diagnosed at six months postpartum, let's just say she was like two months postpartum at this point, right? One fateful Tuesday or one fateful Thursday, her immune system took an interest in her thyroid and probably started spitting out antibodies. You could think of this as the, the inflammation, the immune response, the antibody response, whatever it might be, whatever flavor goes with your autoimmune condition, there's an autoimmune response and an interest in that self tissue. So in the case of Hashimoto's, that immune interest is directed at the thyroid. If it was rheumatoid arthritis, we would be talking about the joints, but it's the same conversation regardless of the tissue. The immune system starts attacking that tissue that it frankly should not be attacking. But if you think about this day, the one fateful Tuesday at two months postpartum or whatever it happened to be, she probably didn't feel a thing, right? Not, at least not due to the Hashimoto's she didn't because she still had 99.9999999999% of a perfectly healthy functioning gland at that point. So it was just a normal Tuesday to her in a way. Now that's gonna keep progressing, right? Once you pop the fun, don't stop. The immune system is now interested in this tissue and the dysfunction that led to the autoimmunity is still present, whether that be nutritional deficiencies or infection or dysbiosis or lack of sleep or whatever, 
whatever your root cause was is probably still going to be there the next day and the next day and the next day. So that's going to smolder and you're still going to have this immune activation or this autoimmune attack in all three of the phases. That's not going to go away. That's kind of the whole point of autoimmune disease. But at some point you get this shifting into the second phase where now you actually have some signs and symptoms. So in the case of Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism, this is probably the phase where your TSH is not out of the lab range yet, right? It's not above that like four, 4.5 threshold that LabCorp and Quest give you, but maybe you're creeping up into the threes. Maybe you're creeping up into like that 3.5, 3.6, 3.8 kind of range where it's subtly happening. You're moving towards overt disease, but your doctors don't care about it yet and nobody's going to mention it to you. And also you might have signs and symptoms, but they're still subtle enough and vague enough that nobody is attributing it to a disease. So maybe you have brain fog sometimes. Maybe you are a bit more constipated. Maybe you see changes in your hair, skin, and nails. Maybe the outer portion of your eyebrow starts to thin a little bit, but it's still subtle, right? You start to get some signs and symptoms because now you have more and more tissue loss, and in this case, less thyroid hormone production, but it's not to the point where anybody's gonna label you or diagnose you yet. Then, of course, that is gonna continue. You're not gonna have symptoms on one random Wednesday and then they're gonna disappear. Assuming that the autoimmunity is still there, the signs and symptoms will be too, and they're going to progress and get worse typically. So signs and symptoms remain in place for phase three, and at some point they get bad enough or your labs change enough that now your medical team captures it, gives you the label, give you the diagnosis. Right, so here in this phase, maybe this was in the you know three, four, five month postpartum range for my mom, and maybe she was having some brain fog, some constipation, you know, uh, maybe even changes in her milk supply when she was breastfeeding me. I don't know, but she had some symptoms, but they weren't that extreme yet. And then at six months postpartum, her symptoms were more notable, more overt, more severe, and now her labs are reflecting it and her labs are out of range. Her TSH was high enough that her doctor said, aha, you have hypothyroidism and we're gonna give you a medication. Similarly, by this stage, maybe your GI symptoms are bad enough and they are the correct pattern that it's starting to resemble celiac disease and this is the point where you get sent in for a scope. Maybe this is the point where your joint pain is progressing and it's getting a lot worse and the pattern is resembling that of rheumatoid arthritis. You get the idea, but this is the point where the symptoms get bad enough and the lab testing is bad enough and abnormal enough that now you receive the label. But here's the thing. Are we going to look at this person in phase one and tell them that they don't have a problem? I'm not. I mean, that is still totally relevant because like I said, if you don't address the root cause that got you there, as a side note, I have a video about the only root causes for autoimmunity, so I'll try to remember to link it below, but if I don't, just search autoimmunity on this channel and you'll find it. But if the root causes of the immune dysfunction are not taken care of, this thing is going to progress. And this is where I'll, I'll take a moment to tell you my story. Again, I know from firsthand personal experience, it is entirely possible to catch something at phase one or phase two and either drastically slow the progression or halt it entirely because I've done it myself. I don't know if I've actually talked about this publicly. I know I've mentioned things about my health and I've, I've talked about my IBS journey before, but I don't know if I've actually talked about this one publicly. Um, back when I was learning functional medicine and healing my gut and figuring out all the things, I was doing testing on myself, just looking for food sensitivities, looking for leaky gut, all the things. And one of the panels that I happened to do had a, uh, an antibody on it called GAD65. And mine came up positive. And this was very curious to me because I didn't have any signs or symptoms of these, the, this problem. Now, GAD65 antibodies are associated with two clinical conditions. One is type 1.5 diabetes, which is also called latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. It's basically like type one diabetes in the sense that it's usually more severe and you need insulin to treat it, but 
Unlike type 1 diabetes, which is almost universally diagnosed in childhood or adolescence, this type is diagnosed in adulthood, typically after the age of 30. Well, that condition and a neurologic condition called stiff man syndrome are associated with these GAD65 antibodies. And when you see the antibodies, there's some indication in research from when I researched this years ago, that if you see those antibodies, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to progress to one of those illnesses within five to 10 years. Well, I, thank God, was in a phase of my life where I was getting my shit together and I was really figuring out how to take care of myself. And I will tell you, I, I saw this antibody on myself 15 years ago and knock on wood, hold on, my light rig has wood, knock on wood, it has yet to manifest as either of those clinical conditions. So I truly, truly believe that I've either drastically slowed it down or I've halted it dead in its tracks. But there was a lot of learning and a lot of trial and error that went into this. It wasn't like one day I just saw this and decided I'm going to tr take vitamin D and that's going to be the end of that. There's been a lot of work on my microbiome, on stress, sleep, movement, tons of work on nutrition. Like my nutrition is way different than it was back when I first captured this. So I've really done the work to try to make my body as healthy as humanly possible. And I attribute that to the halting of this autoimmune condition. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this isn't just an opportunity for me to share my story. This is also because we're going to do some videos in the next couple of weeks talking about an autoimmune cause of low stomach acid. And that can cause persistent iron and B12 deficiency. And for that matter, it is not an uncommon autoimmune disease, particularly in people with Hashimoto's. So I think that knowing what we've talked about on this channel, that low stomach acid can be a root cause for SIBO and bloating and indigestion, and that this is not an uncommon autoimmune condition, and I need to educate you about it, we're going to do a few videos. But one of the things that we're going to talk about is this transition here going from, oh, you have antibodies to, oh, you have antibodies plus symptoms, plus, oh, you have antibodies and symptoms, and now you have laboratory testing and you have the diagnosis. There are going to be people out there, and they're talking about this in the literature, who have probable disease where they have the antibodies, but they're not yet getting the diagnosis when they have a scope. And we need to help those people in addition to the people who are down here. So I hope that this video educated you about autoimmunity, perhaps about a disease you already have. But I also hope that this provided the framework that we're going to need to talk about autoimmune low stomach acid, autoimmune hypochlorhydria, and hopefully maybe I could save people from progressing down to the other phases. If I can capture anybody in this video that's in phase one or phase two and help them slow it down so they don't have to go to phase three, I would just be beyond tickled. And again, I know that it's possible to do that because I've done it myself.